Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> I'm just laughing because it hasn't been like three weeks that I've been saying, okay, this is the week, everything's gonna be back to normal, the vlog's gonna be working, my vlogs are gonna be working, everything's gonna be great, and here I am just freshly back from my trip to New York, and I think it's finally, finally gonna happen now, and that, that's because, um, <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about the trip, but suffice it to say that it has been um, really a <laughs> more crazy week than normal. Um, and I'm going to try to be, believe it or not, as brief as possible, but you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> so um, I am a little excited because um, there was part of me that was a little, little nervous. I wasn't weighing myself while I was gone. And um, again, for those of you that are new or for those of you that might not be new but haven't watched all my videos, I am in the process now of this year, I weigh myself every day when I'm home. That said, um, I haven't weighed myself for probably two years because when I gained weight from this whole perimenopause, hormonal imbalance thing, I do remember to take my pills, um, you know, I just started to fear the scale. It's kind of like, and, and I don't know if many of you are like this, sometimes the things that we fear, we just avoid. And you think that if you just don't deal with it, you know, it's just, then it's, you, it, you're not, you're not facing it head on. It's kind of like if you have been bad at your checking account, like I have been, or, or managing things. You just don't, <laughs> you just kind of spend and you don't balance it all. It just takes care of itself. Um, well, these are things, oh, this shirt has a pocket in the back. I just realized that. Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway. So this year, I'm weighing myself every, every day, and when I was gone in New York, I didn't weigh myself. So there was a little bitty part of me that, although now that I weigh myself every day, um, and now that I, I'm just focused different, my mind's in a better place, I'm able to look at the number on the scale much more objectively and, and kind of get over it when it doesn't tell me the loss that I want to see versus what I see in my body. Because what I can tell you, and I can't show you because so many of you write and go, how come all of your vlogs are only from, you know, the chest up? I'm using it. I'm not using a camera person, people. <laughs> this is just a tripod, so we can't give you a tour of the body, but don't worry. You'll, you get to see the whole thing soon enough. We're going to be doing a lot of different kinds of videos on locale, if you will. But um, that said, oh, I know I was starting to make a point. Um, yeah, so weighing myself every day, it's helped me to to get away from going, oh, because of what that number says, that, you know, I used to, if, if, I, if I would get on the scale, which was very rare, because I, I, it's kind of like the dentist, I, I built up this huge fear that only bad things could come from the scale. I'm much more objective now, because to be honest with you guys, the, the moment I started weighing myself was January 6th, and in on my big ass whiteboard, I put every single day, and I, and I write down exactly what the scale says. Now I have a nice digital scale, so it goes to a decimal point. So I'm writing it in the, in the decimal point. What the scale shows, the exception of today, because the exception of today it was down 2.2 pounds. Um, uh, what the scale shows is that from January 6th to right before I left, there was only a difference of one pound. Here's what's interesting about that. So in three weeks, one pound, I think most people would be freaking pissed off about that if you knew how hard I've been working, how kicking butt I've been doing on my diet, how focused I am, not one cheat day, blah, 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 blah. blah. You might go, well, what the hell? And I think a lot of people would. They'd give up. They'd say, look at the scale. You can't, and Michael tells me this, everybody around me tells me this, you can't just focus on the scale. You know why? Because I can tell you that in the month of January alone, the transformation in this body already is more than I've seen all last year, more. I went to go put on some of my Ann Taylor pants that I have, some of my, you know, my standby business clothes that I don't have to wear that often, but had a lot of meetings with, with agencies this week. And when I meet with my agency people, I wear my business clothes. When I meet with um, fitness brands, you know, we tend to wear, or they encourage me to wear like jeans or workout clothes or whatever. So I go to put on my Ann Taylor pants, and <clears throat> they're my Ann Taylor pants that I went a size up in when I first gained weight. Now, they've been more loose towards the end of last year, um, where I was starting to notice weight loss. But literally, <laughs> 
I texted Michael. I was like, uh, th these are obscene how, how much they're falling off me. Like, hopefully I'll be able to do a video and show you, but they were like, I, I mean, it was a good thing that I had like a, a camisole thing underneath that could cover up my ass and that I had a, a long, I had to make sure I wore a long stuff because my pants, they're so loose. I've lost so much, I, I hate to say weight because the scale's not showing how much weight I've lost or whatever, but I mean, everything is so different. My, when I look in the mirror, you know, it used to be that I would always avoid being, when I was at the gym and I was working out, would never want to look in the full length mirror because I thought, don't get upset, you're going to look in the full length mirror, you're going to think this is too big, you're going to get paranoid about this or that. And, and you know, I, I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on my workout, but I've always really avoided, you know, looking in the mirrors because I thought, oh, what if I get a fat mirror and then I'm going to look gross and I'm going to get upset and I'm going to, you know. All these like mental issues that us chicks have. Um, a lot of men have it too, okay? Um, I've heard from you guys. But um, there have been more times this month, and specifically on this trip, where I'm doing that, <laughs> as Brad Hovell would say, that double take like, wait, what? Whoa, what? That's me? You know, like I was down in the hotel gym and it was at night, and so you could see they have, you know, windows that are blacked out so people can't see in. God, I hope. Um, but I was working out in front of the windows and I could see my reflection. I was looking at my thighs and I'm like, damn, my thighs are getting smaller. Like, people, that's not something that <laughs> this chick says a lot about my thighs. My thighs have always been an area that, have, you know, it's like they're, it's just comfortable there. There's just a lot of extra padding. <laughs> but my thighs, uh, my legs are getting ugh, dry skin. Um, legs are getting leaner. Um, when I go to weigh myself in the morning and get dressed, I have no clothes on and, and when I stand in front of the mirror, it's not, and this was the hardest thing, the hardest thing when this whole um, hormonal imbalance thing started was that, you know, I would stand and look at myself and I had fat on my belly for the first time in my life. My whole life, if I would ever gain weight, it would always be in my hips and my butt and my thighs and my boobs, of course. Um, but I would, I would always have, my friends would always say, how come you have a flat stomach? And then when this thing happened, I was like, what the? And there were a lot of other words that happened because it was just all of a sudden, like somebody went, belly fat, there you go. Take some home. Here's, oh, you, you want some more? There you go. And I, and I would hate it because I would look in the mirror and go, what is this thing here? I've never had it. Yeah. I can now stand, and again, haven't reached my goal, but I'm damn happy what I'm starting to see in the mirror because now I can stand in front of the mirror and go, you know what, I don't, I'm not even like sucking it in and I'm starting to like go, there's not a shadow down there because of the, that little belly stuff is just going away. So all I'm telling you is I am so encouraged. I encourage you to keep the faith. I'm proving all of my doubts and everything wrong and, and I'm, really going to be sharing this with you guys because I know a ton of you are in the same place where you start something like I've started in the past and you know you get a week into it 10 days and in your mind you're thinking you've been doing it longer and you look at the scale or maybe you try on a pair of jeans and you think they should be more loose or whatever um, and it's not so you give up don't give up because things are happening and oh here's my metaphor here's my analogy that I wanted to tell you guys I'm so excited I'm so excited the snow just reminded me of this. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I don't know why I think that this is brilliant. Just a brilliant way for you guys to think of this. Because when I thought of it, of course I texted Michael and he's like, wow, that's neat. And I'm sure he's like this on his phone, like, um, hold on. I actually just did get a text. Okay. Sorry. Um, here's the thing. It snowed out. You can actually see snow on the ground. And here's the analogy I want you guys to think of for yourself when you are getting frustrated and you want to give up and you're not seeing the results yet and, and you're having problems. All of you guys are writing to me going, you know, I'm just having problems getting motivated or I started something off after the new year and I'm not sticking with it. How do you stay motivated? Probably the number one question I've always gotten over the past several years, how do you stay motivated? Um, motivation is a choice, period. Um, it's, it's not easy. Trust me. Okay, it's not easy. When I set my alarm at home and it's for 6.30 in the morning and it's dark, I don't wanna get out of bed. I don't care how bad my desire is to get more fit. 
I don't want to get out of bed. Um, and the more that you realize in your mind, your mind is always going to want to do what's more comfortable. When you're at the gym, your mind is always going to tell you to stop early because you don't feel like doing your, the extra reps. Your mind is going to tell you you don't feel like going to the gym. Your mind is going to tell you you've done enough cardio. Your mind is going to tell you that that extra meal is, is not that big of a deal. It's a short life. Live it up. Whatever. It's your mind that's going to have to really help. You're going to have to get over your mind more so than what your body's capable of. Because guess what? I, when I, I drove home last night, excuse me, um, I got home from a long day of flying, which was very exhausting. Limo dropped me off, and then I was like, I want, I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. So I wanted to get some sushi. As I was driving to go get my sushi, I thought to myself, I'm like, God, I really would like a McDonald's. <laughs> I'd really like a fish sandwich meal with french fries, I'm not going to lie, and a huge Diet Coke. And yeah, it sounded good. And then I'm like, God, when was the last time I had that? And I realized that like all of January, I have been really kicking ass on my eating. When I've been home, I've had my, you know, my, my protein shakes. Um, I've had my diet to go meals. That's it. Um, which tells me exactly what I'm eating all day. It tells me how many calories I'm having. You know, I know exactly where I'm at as far as uh, my macros and, and, you know, I'm having my supplements and, and really that's it. Um, but I haven't had cheat days. I've been following this program and, you know, I just thought about it like, wow, how long, it, you, it, it's not, don't think you're going to die if you don't have a cheat day. Don't think you're going to be totally exhausted if you don't, um, you know, eat the way you used to. Your body adapts and sometimes you'll amaze yourself. It doesn't mean that I don't want McDonald's or cheeseburgers or whatever. I'm freaking going to have McDonald's. I'm going to have cheeseburgers. I'm going to have Giordano's pizza in due time. What I'm doing is following a specific program to reach certain goals in a certain amount of time and then we weave things in later, okay? Back to my analogy, and then I'm going to shut up because I really have to work out. Um, think about, when you think about snow, and for those of you that live in warm locales, God bless you. I'm heading to Miami in five days, and I can't freaking wait um, for actual vacation. But of course, I made three appointments while I'm down there. Typical. Um, I kept thinking about... thinking about, um, you know, giving up and, and um, giving up too soon and, and, and giving up when you, you don't see the results. And this whole idea of, you know, your fitness and your goals are a result of, it, it's, it's an accumulation. It's a cumulative effect. And you have to keep making, the, it's like in your bank. Who am I to be talking about bank stuff? You keep making um, a deposit and a deposit, and you might add, you know, a dollar this week. Maybe you add a dollar the next day, and then you look and you're like, wow, I'm only at five dollars. But guess what? At the end of the year, you're going to look at that, and you're going to have, you know, whether it's a dollar a day and you have $365 plus interest, then it's going to be like, damn, oh, oh, and then they gave me an extra bonus. You, you have to wait for this stuff. You have to keep adding stuff in to what you're doing and, and let the, cum the accumulation of effort and and the science of everything that you're doing let it add up so while you're trying to obviously most of us usually lean out or some of us bulk up build muscle depending on your personal goals you have to wait for the time you can't um, you know put put a penny in and expect for that money to earn interest in a week you just put a lot of pennies in and wait for a lot of a lot of time okay so I'm sitting here, I was trying to think of this analogy that was good for, for myself that illustrated to me what I've done so long. Um, and I've told you guys that like the, the analogy I use for um, not having enough balance in life or, or for my work is that I viewed the way that I've been about you know, working all the time. It's like getting on a treadmill at 8 miles an hour, or as Dutch DeGay would do, 10 miles an hour, or so, <laughs> for like three days in a row. It's like getting on the treadmill and you're feeling great and you're like, this is awesome, I'm doing eight miles an hour, I'm kicking ass. Well then, if you keep doing that and you don't get off and you don't let yourself stop, you know, inevitably, well for me it would probably be like 15 minutes later, for some people it might be six hours later, you're going to go, I have to slow down because you don't have the energy. So then you slow down and you slow down. If you don't get off and take a break and, and give yourself that time to rest and, oh, sorry, I hurt my shoulder a little bit, rest and relax 
and get back on, you're just going to have to keep slowing down, keep slowing down, keep slowing down. Um, and, and inevitably, you're going to have to stop because, you, you know, you'll be holding on to the sides going, I can barely walk. Okay, what, what good is that workout, which, of course, this is an analogy for me to think of my work, if you're like this and you're walking like this and you're holding on and you're barely there. That, that does nothing. What does something is when you get on the treadmill, I have to be very careful. I'll tell you about this in a second. Um, it's not going to be as long as the last shoulder injury. I just heard it getting a little aggressive in my Les Mills workout. <laughs> Some icing and Advilling. Don't worry. Um, uh, so, you know, I realized that with my work, I have to take a break. I have to tell myself to stop because then I'm fresher. I'm fresher. I'm ready to hit it. With, with your working out and your training and your dieting, when you get frustrated, think of making a snowman. Okay? And for those of you that, that live in a warm locale, you're going to have to just imagine with me. Okay? Think about going out and, and, and starting to make a snowman. And you're, you know, you're rolling, you're taking snow and you're rolling because you're making that big, the bottom of the snowman, right? And you're rolling and you get that big and you might look over across the, the way and see somebody who has a completed snowman. And it's, it's, you know, three or four maybe and it's got arms and it's got the eyes and everything together and you're like, damn, I have been out here for like an hour and a half. And all, I don't even have the bottom ready yet. How am I going to get all this snow on here, packed on, and then I've got to make a nut, you know, the middle, and then I've got to make the top, and then I've got to go find the eyes, and then I've got to do this, and then I've got to put on the arms, and then I've got to find a hat and a scarf. And you look at how much you have to go, and you've started this really nice, you know, maybe it's like this big. And so you're like, forget it. And you just, you, you leave that little snowman thing, okay, and you walk inside and you give up and you say, I'll get back to it later. Well, then like two or three days later, you go out and, and either the birds, have, <laughs> not the birds, the squirrels or whatever, that, that thing that you started is gone. It's either melted or whatever, and now there's fresh snow. So you're starting again. And each time you go out there, you kind of do the same thing. You only go for so long and you, you only get about this far because you either look at the other snowmen or you just see that nobody else is doing a snowman. You're the only one. And everybody else is inside going, why are you outside? <laughs> Why are you outside? I'm inside where it's warm. Why are you out there making a snowman? And so you keep giving up. And the whole point is, is like, if you're going to make a snowman, stick to it and see it through and keep going back out there. If you have to take a break, take a break. Go back out there and say, I'm working on this snowman. Look how far I am. And then add more. Look how far I am. Then add more. Look how far I am. And you add the second one. And inevitably, you're going to have the complete snowman that you want. But the complete snowman doesn't happen like that. You have to go through a process. You have to go through layers. And you can't get one layer without the first layer. You know, it, it's, it's an accumulation, like an accumulation of snow. It's a cumulative effect. See where I'm going with it? So every time you think that you want to give up and you, you don't want to stay the course, um, believe me, people, um, it's usually, I, I, I don't want to say, there, there haven't been times this month where I've wanted to give up. I would say that it's hard for me when, it still is hard for me when I get on the scale, but I'm getting over what the number says. Because when you only see, you know, it started off and it went, it was right before Aunt Flo came around. And, and I started to see like a two or almost, almost a three pound drop. Then Aunt Flo came along and it was stable, stable, and then it gained, and then it was back up here. And then it was kind of like just this. So what the scale tells me is I'm not doing crap. But what, what I see and what, what I feel is completely different. So I know that that scale is either telling me one thing, and, and it's not a crock to say, yeah, it's probably because gaining a crap ton of muscle, um, whatever, Michael would say it better than me. But um, all that said is get over it, understand that if you keep eating right and you keep working out and doing what you're supposed to do, you're not going to make yourself heavier and more out of shape. So you have to keep understanding that the more that you do right, you're never going to give yourself negative results. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that you can eat better and work out more and that you're going to do detriment to your body. So however long it takes for your body to start showing your, your results so that you can see it, so that others can see it, so that the scale will show it, put in the time. Don't keep starting over on your snowman. Um, so that's what that little fun metaphor, you might think of that and go, damn, you built up to that, Kelly, and that was stupid. Well, a lot of what I say is stupid, so there you go. Now, I've already done 20 minutes, and I thought I said that I was doing um, something very short today, but clearly it's not. So, I have to go.
get my sweat on, and I will talk to you later. Um, the shoulder thing, I was doing uh, my Les Mills in my hotel room, and I felt it when I did it. I just did like, I don't know what I did. Obviously, I overextended with a punch, um, but Michael and everybody around me told me that I have to um, ice it, Advil, and, and not obviously do any upper body training for a few days until it's better. It's remarkably better today than it was uh, yesterday. We went out Thursday night with Brett Hobel. That was when it, I really heard it. it, was Thursday during the day. So Friday was a little bit better. Today it's much better, but it's obviously still there. So um, I'm going to do some cardio now that has no punching or arms in it. Maybe I'll do p 90 um, plyo. I'll have to figure it out. And then I might do legs later today. But it's been a kick-ass week. I did get on the scale today. It does show I'm 2.2 pounds lighter than I was on Sunday. So, and I'll start sharing, you know what? I'll start sharing my weight and what it is every day on starting on the next vlog so that you can see. So you can see the history of where I was, you know, back in November. You can see where I am now. And then we'll start tracking it together because I think it's very interesting. I'm also very interested how my birds, I had one bird feeder full the entire week and they didn't touch it. And then the other two were empty and I get home, fill up the other two empty bird feeders and that's, they're obsessed with those two empty bird feeders. They will not touch this other one and it pisses me off. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.